we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father of Blessings, we who are like worms, thank you for making us into your sons. By this dawn's help, may we become a blessed man. May we become someone who obeys the word. And as witnesses of miracles, may we only live giving you glory. Do we have problems? Help us to realize. May we act completely to be righteous. And may we and our children receive blessings. It's when we are the smallest, that's when God uses us. Why is it that I only like to be so big? Help us to realize how we only like to be as big as a camel. May we become someone who is small, who can even go through the eye of a needle. Straight away, may we receive miraculous answers. May we receive everything. May the darkness in our families depart. May the problems in our country change to blessings. May we all be witnesses of amazing miracles. We believe that the word is living and working. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Please repeat after me. Sheep. So we want to receive answers, don't we? So, shall we receive them this dawn? So, if we do it exactly, it will happen. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Let's find this. So, he will help at dawn. So, you said amen to receiving answers this dawn. So, it's because you don't obey that it doesn't work. And you just sit there acting as if that's there's nothing wrong with that. And that is what is so sad. If you if you could wash just once in a lifetime and you'd be clean. But then if you roll around in the trash can, you're gonna be clean again. So you say that you only have to wash once in a lifetime. No. As soon as you wash, if you go and roll in the trash, then you're gonna be dirty again. It doesn't matter if it was one minute ago. As soon as you roll into the trash, you're dirty. You just washed a moment ago, but you go into the ashes and you're going to be black. Because you don't know this, that's what's so sad. So let's read together. Let's read to verse 3. That's when you can know exactly about being a source of blessings. So what is this? This this is faith. The, the father of faith, Abraham, he, I have to become him. So let's read. Now Jehovah said to Abraham, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great. And so you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Amen. So this faith, so Abraham is the father of faith. So if I become like him, then I become a father of faith, a source of blessings. But if I don't do well, then I ruin all my children. So to ruin all your children, if you disobey God's word. So first he requires obedience. That's verse 1. Let's read verse 1 again. Now Jehovah said to Abraham, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. Amen. So verse 1, it is requiring obedience. So what is faith? It starts with obedience. So anyone could ask ask you of obedience because men and beasts are the same. Whichever man or whichever beast, they always seek out where they were born. That's beastly thoughts. A man doesn't seek that out. 
A man knows that their homeland is to return to the Lord. But someone like a beast, they always seek out their earthly homeland. So even a fish will return to its home. A beast always returns to where it was born. So as you get older, you hear people saying that they're going to return to their homeland because they're close to death. A man doesn't seek that out. My home is, I've come from the Lord, Romans chapter 11, verse 36. So you want to return to the Lord. It's completely different. The way you live is completely different. So which heart am I living with? I'm living with this, the thoughts of a beast, so I can't receive blessings. And yet you don't know. Why is it that God tells you to depart from your relatives, from your hometown? Because you can't escape from those beastly thoughts. That's why he's saying to depart. But you're sitting there even now with those thoughts and you're like, why can't I receive answers? You say, I don't have those thoughts yet. That's, that's because you're still young. As you get older, it'll happen exactly. You keep seeking out your hometown. You see those people who seek out their parents or their, their hometown. They're like beasts. You know, if they're seeking out their homeland, that's the sign that they're going to be ruined. Because if you're like a beast, that's what you do. But if you have faith in your heart, if you want to become someone who can receive answers now, you don't have those thoughts, whether it's here or there. So someone who goes around with me, he was saying, you look at this place, which is so good. Other people, they come here and they're like, wow, I wish I could live here. But pastor, how is it your whole life? You never say anything like that. Heaven, which is truly good. That's my house. Why would I look at this and say it's good? I see all these strange demons. You know, no matter how good it is, it is, how good would it be, you know, compared to heaven? There's nowhere that has streets paved with gold. There's no house that's been built with diamond. So I've built a, if, if I've built a house of diamond in heaven, why would I leave something that good for this? So someone like that, 100%, they're going to hell. So you have to realize this word. Faith starts with what? What humans think are the most important. They say, you know, flesh is, you know, blood is thicker than water. To depart from that, from that human affection which is what beasts do, to depart from that hometown. Someone who obeys this, that's someone who is blessed. So have you departed? Have you done this? No, you haven't. So if you obey this, from then you become a source of blessings. Because you're a source of blessings, blessings will be poured out, not just to me, but to my children. You're not just a source of blessings. Anyone who curses you will be cursed. And if anyone who blesses you, they'll be blessed. So all over the world, there are people who are praying for me for years. That person receives blessings. But if they're praying for me and I don't receive blessings, it's, you know, if I'm, if I'm not obeying God, then I can't receive blessings. So to pray for others. So someone who is a source of blessings, if they go and pray, then, you know, you'll be blessed. Let's read verse 3. And I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Amen. Is this amen? So how precious is this promise? So if I want to make this blessing mine, what is it I have to do? Well, let's go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. So let's find what we have to repent of. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. If, if we repent of this, you know, don't I witness to you so many times? Me? Before, I'd be like, hmm. And I'd be thinking, hmm. Which word from the dictionary would I should I use here I have these filthy thoughts in Christ that all disappears and it's just I just do exactly so sometimes when I rebuke you without me realizing these things come out and I'm so busy repenting God 
why, do, you know, how is it you make me rebuke such things from my lips? Am I being used as an instrument of evil? And I'm so busy repenting. I don't know if you just listen to it, you know, but as if it's, you know, nothing. But it says, don't even let filthy words depart from your lips. Ephesians. So once these, you know, rebukes leave my lips, I'm like, God, how is it I rebuke like this? Am I being used as an instrument of, of evil and I'm so busy repenting? But people with their own thoughts, even if God tells them to do this, they won't do it. <coughs> so saying only words that are pleasing to hear, that is heresy. I don't know if you can understand this. If you did and you've repented properly, then you'll receive blessings straight away. <coughs> so let's read Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to promise. Amen. So in verse 1, after you obey, after you become a source of blessings, then you do well, a thousand generations do well. Then you become someone who gives benefit to others. What about my business? No, if you're a source of blessings, you everything will do well. And if someone blesses you, even they will do well. This amazing blessing, you have to... Be part of Christ. You have to do four-step repentance. When you do four-step repentance properly, that's when that promise becomes yours. So then if you've done four-step repentance, why doesn't this blessing become mine? So here we have another problem. <coughs> I've done the sins that you've told me to repent of by four-step repentance. Okay, well, have you changed? No, you're stubborn again. Oh, when I make kimchi, I have to always make it like this. So you say this demon talk. You say talk that's outside of Christ. My thoughts make me go outside again. My theories make me go outside again. You do that. So you go and roll in the trash. So if you've done four-step repentance, then the blessings of Abraham, where you're the source of blessings, that inheritance comes to you. So in Genesis chapter 12, did he receive all blessings? No. Why not? Well, yes, he departed from his relatives and his hometown. He did it with his actions, even though we can't. So he. So these days, you know, the transportation's really good. But back then, you know, he would have maybe had to ride an animal. Or, but he departed. But why didn't he receive all blessings? So Genesis chapter 12 is not it's not all faith. So Genesis chapter 22, till he gets there, he has to, you know, um, give up his wife. He doesn't have food, so he goes to Egypt. So even though he's obeying, how much does he disobey according to my thoughts, my theories? Until all of that disappears, he has to receive the training of godliness. Genesis chapter 12, verse 12 to 14. That's when he received blessing according to his desires. But these fakes, they don't even get to this point. They start and then they just depart. And so they go outside of Christ. So all they receive are disasters and curses. So this is why you can't receive salvation. So you start to do four-step repentance well. As soon as there's a little bit of suffering or difficulty, you depart. Genesis chapter 12. So you start well, but then you get to a point where you have to give up your wife. What does it mean if you have to give your wife to someone else? You know, before you make her into a prostitute, how badly are you living? You know, that you have to separate and, you know, th that's the state he's in where he, he's about to die. When when tests like this come to your family, you just you just forsake four step repentance and then you say, But I've done it for how many years? So what? Genesis chapter twelve, you've already gone outside. Even before you get to Genesis twenty two, because things aren't happening according to your thoughts, you've already gone out. So because things aren't happening according to your thoughts, you don't obey God's word. You say it's not happening according to my thoughts. And then you say other things. That's what the fakes do. When I look, I think they're so strange. You've, you haven't even gotten to a point where you have to give up your wife, but you still betray and you're doing things by your thoughts and you say, oh, my diseases aren't being healed. Oh, I'm not receiving uh, material blessings. How 
How can you be like that? Genesis chapter 12 to Genesis chapter 22. I've preached this at least three, four times. I don't know very well, but when I pray according to the word, when I pray with the word, you know, it comes out that I've preached how many times. So when I see how you act, when are you going to receive blessings? In other words, when are you going to go to heaven? It is so sad. Genesis chapter 12, us receiving these blessings, we have to be part of Christ. We have to do four-step repentance. This is what God has appointed. Then we'll receive all of that inheritance, those blessings. Why can't I receive? Well, Genesis chapter 12, just because you're the source of blessings, that's not what he gives you. Every time you pray to receive everything, everything that God's prepared, you have to get to Genesis 22. So it, mid, so in between, you know, you do all these things, whichever, whatever you want to do, which is if you don't have, you know, food and you do things according to your thoughts. So then you get to a point where you have to give up your wife. You get to that terrible state. So before you get there, you know, we don't even do forced out repentance. We've already forsaken it. We've gone home. So you're going the way to hell. How regretful is this? You know, that he says, Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, you're strange. Why are you going to curses? Except our thoughts, we're like, well, doing forced to repentance, all we get are problems, are big headaches. That's what your ancestors have planted. That's what you have done. No matter how much you hate it, you and your children have to eat this. You know, if he gave this to you slowly, you would have to suffer your whole lifetime. Your children would have to be ruined. But he's returned it quickly to you so that you can quickly wash it with the blood of Christ and get rid of it. If you don't, if you hate this and you depart, what, what's God going to do? You know, you think you've escaped from God, even in hell, you are within his hand. Psalm 139 verse 1 to 6, and yet you still depart. You see so many people departing. And they're all departing because of their thoughts and their theories. They have so many excuses, grumblings. They have so many things to say. That's because they depart. You see if they depart, if they do well. Why is it that person? They're not doing well. Why do they live like that? They always have excuses, reasons, thoughts, theories. They have so many grumblings and complainings. Because of that, you know, they these people who have their disasters and curses from their ancestors, you know, all they have to do is come to Christ and re to wash that away. But they hate to do that. All they have to do is wash with the blood of Christ and be cleansed and become a new person. But they won't do this. This is why we cannot receive. But if we get to fearing, then all the blessings, you'll see it with your eyes. You'll see it in front of you. But you don't see it. So you you just go back and forth. In, in Genesis chapter 12, you don't get to chapter 22. So on the Buddhist TV, the channel, it was saying if if you commit fornication, even Buddha turns turns around. That's what the they they turn their back. That's what these monks say. We have to be very careful in mimicking what they say. It's not something you can just say carelessly. But this is what I saw with my eyes about a month ago. This monk, monk came out on the Buddhist channel. And, he, and, and they were saying, yes, even Buddha turns his back. This is what they're saying in the open, publicly. But they were saying these spouse problems, you know, this problem of fornication, they were, you know, you know, the demons, they play up the most in, in that problem. You know, where they even murder. Genesis chapter 12. So our ancestors, who hasn't committed this sin? Who doesn't have this sin amongst us? So we have to get past this stage. If you do four step repentance, you're able to win over this. If you have wisdom, you will have to, you'll, you can win over this. So you have to get past this. But as soon as you get close to these problems, uh, even if I do false state repentance, I, only filthy things happen. And you depart. You, you find out, you ask. 
and anything that upsets you. They up, It upsets you because of your thoughts. God says it's all thanksgiving because when you go past it, you realize it's all beneficial to you. But it's your thoughts and your theories that make you upset. God says it's all thanksgiving. What your ancestors have done, you don't know, so you find it upsetting. But if you let that remain, you and your children would always fall because of that and you wouldn't be able to receive blessings. But if you wash this with the blood of Christ, there's nothing but thanksgiving. So if you have a needle in the room, you know, propped up, always someone's going to be pricked. But if you early find, discover it and wash it with the blood of Christ and get rid of and pull it out, then there's nothing but good for me and my children. So don't say you're upset. Don't say, oh, what a filthy family. With prayer of thanksgiving, get rid of it. But you hate this. It's so frustrating. You so don't understand. And that's why you can't get to fearing. And that's why you can't see the blessings that God's put in front of you. Genesis chapter 22. God has, he's given you everything. He's, he's put it in, he's put it there. But why can't you receive? You keep going outside of Christ. You do, you won't come to fearing. What is fearing? It's one heart, one way. So it's because you have a double heart. That's why you have your thoughts, your theories, your excuses, your envyings. This is why it doesn't work. If you're truly in Christ, then you're one heart, one way. When does this happen? Genesis chapter 12 to Genesis chapter 22 doesn't have to take many years. Who says that? If right now, if you say, I don't care if I die and you're one heart, one way, then it'll happen. So someone who, someone who's decided to give up their life, you know, if you're dead, you don't have anything. You don't have your wife. You don't have your children. You, you, it's only him. But if you do four-step repentance, this is what happens. I'm going to witness to you. If I'm lazy in doing four-step repentance, then I want to see my grandchildren. Oh, my grandchildren, they love their grandfather. You know, why don't I just be lazy in my prayers one day and go, go out with my grandchildren? But if, if I say, I have two hearts, I've already fallen to, my, to, my, to these demons. I'm ruining myself, my family, my, the saints. I'm making all those people who pray for me ruin. And then if I repent, then whether it's Deacon Kim or my grandchildren or Deacon So, they're all the same. I don't have anything in my heart. I don't have anything. So why don't you experience this? That's what one heart is. That's what one, that's what singleness of heart is. So your heart doesn't go to your, your spouse or your children or to fame. or It only goes to God. That's one heart. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. Our hearts. They're, our hearts are one, so we can only go to one place. You say, oh, I've caught two rabbits. That means my I'm divided into two. In other words, I'm dead. I'm double-minded. So don't say, don't say these lies where you're double-minded. That's Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Why can't you receive answers this dawn? As long as you fear, you'll receive. But you say amen, but you don't obey. You don't fear. You have these thoughts and those thoughts and you have all these thoughts. Your heart's divided into 10,000 places because you have this evil. So because you're not one heart, one way, you can't have your diseases healed. You can't take the money. You can't take the fame that God's placed in front of you. This is the way we're living. It's not just us. Abraham too did this. And that's why from chapter 12 to 22, you know, he's written this whole process and he says, you too will, will go this. Does that mean I have to, I have to take that long too? No. At this time, if your heart's one heart, one way, if you go that one way where you follow God, that one way, and then it's my heart's one in Christ where he makes it, not me. That's fearing. Then your diseases will be healed. You will receive answers. All your desires will be fulfilled. But you don't do this. So if you don't repent even a little, you go outside. But then, you know, if you repent at dawn, you just you just go to lunchtime without 
without repent without repenting so when you go to work where everything you see repent if you repent you overflow with joy god gives this joy so you can't but help living with continuous smiling you look at this and you repent and and you you smile you look at that and you repent and smile so when you hear god's voice at dawn in front of the pastor you say amen but then you go home and you go okay i've got to pack the lunch and, and so you forsake god you forsake everything you just fall straight into the world and then you go to disasters and curses and then as you pack the lunches you say oh be healthy when when you when you've made it work so so this is the training of godliness the training of godliness you have to pay attention and as you repent you stay continue to stay in Christ which satan can hinder you which god won't give you blessings you'll receive everything so this dawn let's receive all of this so when you're trained So even as I I've said this in a tape many years ago even each step that I take which way should my le left foot go which way should my right foot go don't do a thought according to your thoughts and your theories let's become someone who fears and receive all answers let's live receiving no matter what happens it will happen today god has prepared what's mine all we have to do is fear and we can take it as long as we have one heart one way with one heart as long as we go one way so this singleness of heart one heart one way but you go out and you go 10,000 ways you go over here and you look at this and then you go over there and look at that you, if you go along the street you should go straight if you go like this if you're zigzagging then you're drunk You're not in your right mind. So to, from now, let's receive from this dawn. Let's receive Genesis chapter 12 to Genesis chapter 22. Just because your house is a mess and you say, "Oh, I've done four step repentance and my household's a mess," you know my spouse is having an affair, and that's right. That's what's come down from your ancestors. That's what you have committed. The sins that you've committed, the sins of your heart and your flesh. Because you haven't washed this, now straight away wash it. Oh, I've done four step repentance. My child was good. You know they've become such a ch cheater and they're dr a drunk and that's what your ancestors have done. Before it was all covered, but now you've opened it and it's filled with maggots. Wash it with the blood of Christ. Be thankful. Everything that had these needles stuck in them, now you can pull it out. So be thankful. You know those people who don't know and they're like, I've done four step repentance and it's it's worse, so I'm just going to give up. If you see these needles, if you see these maggots, it's not that by forced out repentance it's worse. It means to quickly clean it. If you leave that alone, then you'll suffer more. But if you get rid of it, you'll receive blessings. Let's quickly clean it with thanksgiving and become someone who fears. Let's receive everything. Let's all pray. Father, Father, your word, there is not one lie. You this word of truth you love us the most but we've had such simple thoughts because th if things didn't happen according to my thoughts and my theories I did the wrong things have pity on us at this door may we receive answers may we go the way where we fear you no matter what difficulty quickly by repentance to get rid of it even before it sprouts by repentance to cut it off to uproot it and may we and our children only become sources of blessings may we receive all the blessings that jehovah has prepared at this dawn we want to receive answers how many filthy roots do we have i don't know about them but when the father looks he he wants to give us blessings but if he does straight away we will betray and we'll become corrupt we'll ruin ourselves and our children and so that's why he can't give to us help us to hear this properly Lord at any time there's nothing that's mine it's my thoughts and my theories that make me ruin and go outside of Christ may we repent thoroughly only stay in Christ and by one heart one way may we be guided whatever blessings are given because we're on the rock to not be shaken to not spill them May we show this this life to God and receive answers. At this dawn surely we will receive. 
with thorough repentance, four-step repentance, even if it's just one day to continuously live on the rock and to be to be seen as right in front of God and to receive everything and become witnesses. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. How wrongly have I lived? How much have I gone outside of Christ? <laughs> 